This episode is sponsored by NordVPN, The Take's favorite way to stay safe online. Go to nordvpn.com slash the take to take control of your internet experience. Why do women always fall for the rich guy? Even when there are a lot of red flags, he's a total fraud. This guy is just having a very different life than I ever will experience. The Tinder swindler tells the unbelievable true story of how Simon Levive pretended to be the son of a diamond billionaire to seduce women and get them to fund his expensive lifestyle. Would it be possible for me to borrow $30,000 and make a bank transfer while I'm on the phone with him? Surprisingly, after the film came out, the women he targeted faced a lot of criticism, as viewers felt they shouldn't have fallen for what seemed like an obvious scam. But in recent years, there have been many examples of similar romance scammers who use the promise of money and status to dupe women into relationships. The corrupt Italian surgeon Paolo Maccarini, who convinced journalist Benita Alexander their wedding would be officiated by the Pope. Richard Scott Smith, who posed as a successful real estate developer and pilot, or John Meehan, aka Dirty John, who lived a lie as a successful anesthesiologist in order to defraud designer Deborah Newell. Well, he's a nurse mm -hmm. and he has advanced anesthesiology training. People lost $1.3 billion to romance scams between 2017 and 2021, with total losses increasing each and every year. So what is it about a seemingly wealthy man that blinds so many women to the facts in front of their eyes? Private jets, cool cars, amazing parties all over the world. It's not fair to blame these victims or simply assume they're shallow and materialistic when there's a much bigger cultural problem at play here. Don't you know that a man being rich is like a girl being pretty? You might not marry a girl just because she's pretty, but my goodness, doesn't it help? Here's our take on how our culture has sold women a false dream of the luxurious Prince Charming and whether we can collectively get over this dangerous fixation on the rich guy allure. The allure of the wealthy guy is deeply rooted in our culture. Classic Disney films, some of the first stories kids come into contact with, repeat the pattern of humble maidens obtaining an exciting, luxurious existence through marrying a rich prince. I've never seen so many books in all my life. You like it. It's wonderful. Then it's yours. Cecilia Philhoy, one of the Tinder swindler's victims, even cites Beauty and the Beast as the kind of story she grew up wanting to emulate. I had memorized the entire Beauty and Beast cassette. It just sticks with you, like the feeling of a prince coming to save you. Meanwhile, money inspires trust in us. Psychologist Dr. Penny Sue Loras attributes this to the halo effect, which posits that if we see one positive quality in someone, such as wealth, we'll instinctively fill in the gaps. Quote, if we know someone's successful, we might also assume they must be intelligent, fair-minded, and politically savvy. Just reading about him? You really got the sense from him that he wanted to help people, that he wanted to help humanity. So, scammers like Simon Levive play act a wealthy lifestyle in order to project an aura of importance. When Simon first meets Cecilia, he whisks her away on a private jet. I felt that I would be stupid if I said no. While also acting very busy with urgent work. He starts getting a lot of calls. By investing in creating a first impression of ultra elite status, he quickly earns a woman's trust and affection, so that even after obvious red flags pop up, she he's primed to still believe in her initial image of him. You trust me and I trust you, so of course we're gonna help each other. It wasn't even a, like a question. Pernilla, another featured victim in the Tinder swindler, doesn't romantically fall for Simon like Cecilia, but she's still convinced of his authority because his story seems to check out online. You always Google everyone you're supposed to go on a date with. His father is this diamond tycoon. And since he treats her to the perks of his lavish lifestyle before asking for anything, that authority appears confirmed to her. Dirty John uses a similar technique to convince Deborah Newell, first making claims online and then backing them up with apparent evidence in person, like turning up to functions in his medical scrubs and acting authoritative about his line of work. He said everything right, I liked what he had on his profile. He had his daughters, he had animals. Um, that he was an anesthesiologist. Journalist Benita Alexander first met Paolo Maccarini, the subject of the Dr. Death podcast's third season, on a documentary being made about him. So again, this authority he had from the start of their relationship completely shaped how she saw him. He had this nickname that he was a rock star surgeon and the super surgeon. 
And I think that came from the fact that he was willing to take risks. He was a cowboy. Bad Vegan tells the story of a stranger romance con, how Anthony Stranges convinced successful restaurant owner Sarma Melngalis to wire him over a million dollars using otherworldly narratives like that he would make her dog immortal. But again, she trusted him in part because he made her believe he was very rich, and she thought he was legit because he seemed connected online to her famous friend Alec Baldwin. Is there any chance that Sarma married me? Anthony no, of course. So much of the Tinder swindler's scheming happened online. He wouldn't have been able to create the illusion of wealth without social media, for example. It makes the internet seem like a scary place, but luckily there are ways to stay secure online. Start by using a VPN, like this video's sponsor, NordVPN. NordVPN is especially safe because it offers double protection. It changes your IP twice to cover your web traffic with an extra layer of security. And because it masks your IP address, you can keep your browsing private. That means no one, not even Simon Levive, can track what you're up to online. What's more, it works on your phone so you're protected on the go. This is amazing if, like me, you love to travel. NordVPN is available in 59 countries for a borderless internet experience. And you get worldwide instant access to hundreds of streaming websites. Never get stuck in the airport without entertainment again. Right now, you can get a two-year plan at a huge discount, plus four additional months for free when you go to nordvpn.com slash the take. It's risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee, so make sure to click the link in the description below or go to nordvpn.com slash the take. In addition to all the rich guy worship, our culture bombards us with stories about successful but broken men who yearn for a good woman to save them. She is this small town girl like me, hoping for something bigger. She meets this person, then she saves him in a, in a sense. In Fifty Shades of Grey, hot, wealthy tycoon Christian Grey is privately a suffering mess. So he chooses regular girl Anna because only she gets how to fulfill his emotional needs. Anna taught me how to love. In About a Boy, Will is financially set for life, but his life is empty until he takes on a quasi-parental role to a boy named Marcus and meets his love interest, Rachel. I was in deep trouble, and there was only one person who could help me out. In Indecent Proposal, billionaire John Gage is so captivated by Diana that he offers her one million dollars to spend the night with him. But he can't buy her heart away from the husband she really loves, and we're left with the sense that a good woman's love is worth more than all the money in the world. She never would have looked at me the way she did at him. At the end of The Social Network, the irony is that Mark Zuckerberg has built extraordinary wealth with a social network that supposedly brings people together, but is completely alone himself, refreshing his own website for updates about his ex-girlfriend. And similarly, in Cinema Paradiso, Toto may be a successful filmmaker who's romanced a string of beautiful women, but he still feels empty and pines over his young love, Elena, the one who got away. In the Tinder Swindler, Simon skillfully manipulates his victims into seeing themselves in this female savior role. Simon pretended he had everything financially, but the other piece of his narrative was to appear vulnerable, so the woman could help him. I wanted to ask you a favor. If you have an American Express credit card, I can link it to my account. The part of Simon's scam that's become the biggest joke is the constant vague talk about his enemies and the photograph of his beaten up bodyguard Peter to convince his marks he's under threat. Peter is down. He sent exactly the same pictures to me telling me that his enemies had beaten Peter up. But while it seems funny from the outside, by this point in the relationship, his victims are completely ready to step into that familiar cultural narrative of becoming his rescuer. As long as the internet has existed, there have been scams defrauding people with the promise of making them rich. Once every hour, someone is involved in an internet scam. That man is Michael Scott. A lot of them seem obvious if you step back and think. Maybe I should feel weird about giving a stranger my social security number, but the guy's a Nigerian prince. 
But people fall for these scams because they play on emotion, appeal to our biases, and apply pressure to rush us into split-second decisions. One of the reasons romance scams work so well is that dating apps already create a similar environment. Obviously, people bring strong emotion to the prospect of finding love or attraction, while quick swiping and fast-paced conversations encourage instant decisions. A 2016 study also showed that Tinder users had lower self-esteem and more shame around their bodies, so these apps create a vulnerability there to be exploited. The most important thing that you can have is a picture of your face. And then you have a picture with friends, because it's important to show that you're social as well. Forensic psychologist Dr. Joni Johnson writes, it's emotions and unmet needs that make us vulnerable to romance scams, not logic. It's not how smart we are, it's how successful we are at preventing our feelings from driving our decisions. Simon Levive hooked his victims with the textbook Love Bombing playbook, showering them with expensive gestures and sweeping them off their feet with fast declarations of commitment. She's here, my love, I love you, I miss you, I can't wait to see you. So they'd feel too attached to respond rationally when he suddenly became demanding and distant. To this day, despite the huge reach of the Tinder swindler documentary, Levive is apparently continuing to leverage the smoke and mirrors of the internet to project his image of luxury and find women willing to trust in him. I know this monster that everybody has uh, created. They weren't conned and they weren't threatened. Even when the internet's not involved, the rich guy's money can easily be used as a smoke screen for getting away with bad behavior. So stop worrying and let me spoil you. It's documented that high-earning men are more likely to cheat. Blue Jasmine's story of a Bernie Madoff-esque financial crook and his wife, who looks the other way, captures how wrong it often is to blindly put our faith in wealthy men while looking down on working-class men who make an honest living. God, don't you want to meet some decent man? You no, know, he's sexy and he doesn't steal. As Tinder Swindler and all these other stories show us, worshipping money and lusting after luxury are not the ideal tenets of romance that we should be subscribing to in this day and age. We're at a tipping point when it comes to the rich guy in our culture. Not only can a performative, lavish lifestyle feel completely out of touch in today's unequal environment, My earring's gone! Yeah, there's people that are dying. But we're also becoming more discerning about where a lot of that wealth has come from. Billionaires themselves aren't the problem. The real failure is in how our economy is organized. There's something telling about the fact that the Tinder swindler's most popular hero was probably Eileen, his victim, who retaliated by taking direct, gleeful financial revenge. So he's still selling his things now? Yes, I'm still selling his things. The rich guy may once have been the ultimate prize, but now it feels like we're ready to see him get taken down. The prince of diamonds to this homeless king me river thank you for watching the take don't forget to subscribe and let us know what you're watching